Let's talk about the transitive property of parallel lines, which is a way for us to describe the relationship between the angles created by multiple parallel lines. The transitive property of parallel lines states that if two lines are parallel to the same line, then those two lines are parallel to each other. Or another way to say that is if line A is parallel to line B, and line B is parallel to line C, then line A must be parallel to line C, or all three lines are parallel. Since A and B are parallel, and C and B are parallel, C and A are both parallel to B, and therefore all three lines are parallel. Let's use this property to write some proofs. This time we're given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that angle 3 is supplementary to angle 4. So I can label that angle 1 and 2 are congruent on my diagram, but unfortunately there's no symbol for labeling supplementary angles on a diagram. So let's see, what am I trying to prove? I'm trying to show that Q is parallel to S. Well, remember from our previous lesson that in order to show that two lines are parallel, you must either prove that you have corresponding alternate interior or alternate exterior angles that are congruent, or that you have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary. Well, for line Q and S, I don't see any of those special kinds of pairs of angles. But instead, let's focus on line Q and line R. We marked that angle 1 and angle 2 were congruent, and angle 1 and angle 2 are alternate exterior angles because they're outside of the two lines that we're trying to prove are parallel, and they are on opposite sides of transversal T. So since I have alternate exterior angles that are congruent, I can conclude that the lines are parallel by the alternate exterior angles converse. Now let's look at line R and line S. We were told in the given that angle 3 and 4 were supplementary, and I see on the diagram that angle 3 and angle 4 are consecutive interior angles. They're both above transversal T, and they're in between lines R and S. That makes them consecutive interior. So since I have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, I can conclude that line R and line S are parallel by the consecutive interior angles converse. So now I see on my diagram that all three of these lines are marked as parallel to each other. So I can write my final proof statement that Q must be parallel to S, and my reason is that new thing that we just learned, the transitive property of parallel lines. And let's try one more. This time we're told that angle 1 and 2 are congruent, and that angle 3 and 4 are congruent. I'll label that on my diagram like so, and like so. We're trying to prove that line A is parallel to line C, so this line needs to be parallel to this line. Well, on those two lines, I don't see any of my special kinds of pairs of angles, so I'm going to have to look elsewhere to figure this out. For example, notice that angle 1 and angle 2 are corresponding angles. They're both basically in the top right-hand corner out of the four angles that were created by the intersection of line N with lines A and B. So since I have corresponding angles that are congruent, I can conclude that line A is parallel to line B because of the corresponding angles converse. Now let's examine angle 3 and angle 4. Wouldn't they be alternate interior angles? They're on opposite sides of transversal M, and they're in between lines B and C. That makes them alternate interior. And since I have alternate interior angles that are congruent, I can conclude that line B and line C are parallel because of the alternate interior angles converse. So since I have all three of these lines ended up being parallel, A, B, and C are all parallel, I can state my final proof statement that A is parallel to C, and that would be the transitive property of parallel lines. And that wraps up everything you need to know about writing proofs about parallel and perpendicular lines. In our next lesson, we're going to explore how to write the equation of parallel and perpendicular lines that have been graphed in the coordinate plane.